Alright, what's going on everyone? In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Tailwinds, which is a utility-first CSS framework. So then, we're going to be using Tailwinds to create a modern landing page for a browser extension called Bookmark. Now, before we go ahead and create this page, I first want to run you through the layout here. So, starting off at the top, we have our header, which is going to have our basic branding here on the left-hand side, and then we're going to have our navigation on the right. Next up, we have our hero section, which is going to have our header. We're going to have a paragraph tag to describe what the extension is about. And then we have our two call to action buttons right here. And then we have our image on the right. So to achieve this layout, we're going to be using Flexbox here. All right. Now, next up, we have our features, which we have our header once again and a paragraph tag to describe this section. And then we have each one of our features here, which the layout is going to be very similar to our hero section here. So we're going to be using Flexbox to lay out these uh, features as well. Okay. Now, the next section we have is going to be for downloading the extension. Now, for this section, we're going to be laying this out using the grid. Okay. So within this video, I'm going to show you how to incorporate Flexbox using Tailwinds and also the grid. Okay, now the next section here we have is going to be for our FAQ. Now this is going to be completely static. Now what I mean by that is we're not going to actually be able to toggle these FAQ, uh, FAQ items here. Now I didn't want to incorporate any JavaScript into this video. I wanted to mainly focus on building out a page using Tailwind. So if you do want to challenge yourself, and incorporate a accordion menu style FAQ section into this project. I do have a video that goes over how to make a accordion menu using JavaScript, and I'll go ahead and link that down below in the description here. Okay, now the last section we have here is a stay up to date where you can go ahead and enter your email and sign up for the contact list. And then we have our footer here with our branding and our navigation links, and then our two icons for social media. Now this application is also fully responsive. So if I go to inspect this here, and we are taken to a mobile view, you can see that everything is now stacking when we scroll down here through our application or our uh, landing page here, I should say. Now, one other thing I do want to mention is that our navigation is going to collapse, but we're actually not going to be displaying or creating a mobile navigation menu here within this video. Now, just like I mentioned with my accordion menu video, I do have a video that goes over how to create a mobile navigation menu using JavaScript once again, and I'll leave that link down below in the description to check that out if you want to challenge yourself and incorporate that into this uh, landing page here. All right, so that's what we're going to be building here. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, before we get started here, I want to do a quick introduction to Tailwinds for anybody that has not had the opportunity to work with this framework. Now, if you've already had the opportunity to work with Tailwinds and are familiar with it, I'll go ahead and leave a timestamp down below in the description to go ahead and skip this section. Now, first off, what is Tailwinds? So, Tailwinds is a utility-first CSS framework packed with classes that can be composed to build any design directly in your markup meaning you never have to leave your HTML sheet in order to design or style your page, okay? Now, I do want to mention that you should have a great understanding of HTML and CSS prior to learning Tailwinds or any other CSS framework for that matter, because especially with Tailwinds, if you're not familiar with CSS and its core concepts, the class structure or adding these classes to the HTML is going to be very meaningless, and you're really not going to have an understanding of what is going on. Okay, now next thing is Tailwinds is very low level compared to other frameworks such as Bootstrap and Materialize. Now, what do I mean by low level? Now, what I mean is that Bootstrap and Materialize are component based CSS frameworks. So they have all the components built out for you and you incorporate those into your, you know, your HTML and your page. Now, when you make a Bootstrap website or a Materialize website, you're going to have a very clear idea when you look at that site that it was made with Bootstrap. Now, when you use Tailwinds, it's going to be very hard to distinguish that it was made with Tailwinds because it's so low leveled and you're adding simple styles to your elements with the low level classes that Tailwind creates. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And that's kind of a simple brief overview of what Tailwinds actually is. 
So what are we going to be covering here inside of this video? Now to cover everything that Tailwinds has to offer would be nearly impossible. And that's not my objective with this video. My objective is to give you the foundation in order to start creating pages using this framework. So what we're gonna be covering here is first off, we're going to be installing Tailwinds via NPM. Now you can also use Tailwinds via CDN, but it comes with a lot of limitations. Now we're also going to be customizing our Tailwinds framework here. We're also going to be applying base styles to our classes, and we're going to cover a lot of the utility classes that come along with this framework, such as layouts for Flexbox and Grid. We're gonna to be touching upon spacing classes, typography, backgrounds, borders, transitions, animations, and more. So we're gonna be covering a lot here, and by the end of this video, you should be able to head it on your own and create pages using this framework. So since we're going to be installing Tailwinds via NPM, you're going to want to make sure that you have Node.js installed on your computer. So to look if you have it installed because you may have it on your computer and not even know it, open up a terminal if you're on Mac or if you're on Windows Command Prompt and type in Node-V here. And if you return a value here where it says version 14.17.0, or whatever version is current right now at the time of watching this, that means you have Node.js installed on your computer. Now, if you don't have anything when you type in this command right here, what you want to do is head over to Node.js.org and download the latest feature here. And then go through the installation steps to install it on your computer. And then after that, what you want to do, just to ensure that you have it installed correctly, go ahead and say Node.v again and ensure that you're getting return a version here. So for this project, I'm going to be using VS Code and inside of VS Code right now, I have an empty folder called Modern Landing Page here. So to begin, what we wanna do is head up to our tab and I wanna click on Terminal and we wanna open up a new terminal here. Now, the reason why we need it node is to run a command called npm. We're gonna say init hyphen y to create a new package.json here. Okay, and you're gonna see that appear right here which is where we're gonna have all of our dependencies, which is gonna be Tailwinds for this project here. So what we wanna do is if we head over to tailwindcss.com, you can see that to get started, we want to run the command npm install Tailwind CSS. So I can just click and copy this right here. We can head back over to our terminal and I'm gonna paste this in here. And then this is going to install Tailwinds into our dependencies here. So that has completed and now you can see inside of our dependencies, we have Tailwind CSS and currently at the time of recording this video, it is on version 2.1.4. Okay, so what we wanna do next is we're gonna head over to Tailwinds and we're going to go to the documentation for installing here. So you can see getting started and we have installation right here. Now, the first thing we wanna go ahead and do is we need to create a CSS file if you don't have one, which we don't. And we need to use the at Tailwind directive here to inject Tailwind's base components and utility styles into our project here. So let's start off by copying these three right here. And we're gonna head over to our project and we're gonna create a new folder and we're gonna call this SRC. And we're gonna have a new file of style.css here and we're gonna paste these in. Now we want to have a folder for our output. So I'm going to create a new folder and we're going to call this public. Okay. Now inside of here, we want to create our index.html and we're going to have our style.css here. Now what we need to do to actually generate all of the styles here from Tailwinds is we need to run a build command. Now, where we're going to do this is inside of our package.json here. So currently we have this scripts right here, which we have a test one. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to remove this test value here, and we're going to create a new script called build colon tail wins. Okay. Now inside of here, what we want to do is we're going to say tailwind build, and we want to build from our source file here and style.css. So we're going to say src, and we're going to say slash style.css here. And then we want to output this to our public and our style.css here. So how we can do that is say slash or dash O, and then we're gonna go public slash style.css. Now what we can do here is inside of our terminal, we can say npm run, and we're gonna say build colon tailwinds here. 
Now what should happen is, let's see here. Oh, did we not save this? We didn't save it. Now let's try that. So npm run uh, build tailwinds here. And as you can see right now, it's going to build our style sheet here and it has finished. So now if we head over to this public folder in our style sheet, you should see all of the stylings that we have from tailwinds here. So we have a simple reset here, which is going to be like the base and then if we go back here, we should scroll down a little bit more and start to see all the styling and utility classes that were imported here. So let's see here. And if I keep scrolling down, you'll see a whole bunch of these. So we have like space Y of, you know, zero divided by 0.5. And if we keep going down, we should see a lot. Uh, let's see here. We start having our, I think I've seen some background ones in here, but I'm, I think you guys get the idea. So what, we're, what we did here with that build command is we got all of the base styling for all the utility classes from Tailwind so that we can use them inside of our markup now. So let's begin here by creating our boilerplate with Emmet. So to do that, I'm gonna say exclamation point and tab to go ahead and generate our boilerplate here. And let's give this a title of book mark landing page here. And then let's link up our style sheet here that we went ahead and generated from our SRC here. So we're going to be using this style sheet inside of our public folder. So we'll say link and we'll do dot slash and we'll say style dot CSS here. Now let's go ahead and begin with our markup. And the first thing we want to go ahead and create here is going to be this navigation or our header here. Now let me go ahead and close that out. Okay. So let's go ahead and open up our body here and to keep things clean and divide each section up, I'm going to be using comments here and I'm going to say header. Now let's go ahead and start off with our header tag here. Now inside of our header tag, what we're going to be using is another tag of nav. And here's where we're going to be using our first class. So we want to use a class of, I can spell here, containers. So this is going to keep our our, sorry, our elements inside of this nav tag confined to a certain width here. So if we head over to our um, documentation here, you can see that on the layout section here, we have the containers. So this is going to be for fixing an elements width to a current breakpoint. So here is all the breakpoints. So we have at small, the max width is 640, 768 is the uh, next breakpoint, and you can see that it kind of correlates to the breakpoint what the max width is going to be to keep your elements confined to each one of these breakpoints here. Now, the one issue with the container class here is it's not going to automatically center the elements into the middle of the page. So if we were to, let's go ahead and say inside of our container here, we're going to have an H1, which we're not, we'll just say testing here. So to view our changes or to view this HTML file, I'm going to be using a extension called live server. So let's go ahead and open this with live server here. And as you can see, we have a container class around here and it is working, but it's not centered. So if I click on this right now, you can see we have this and the max width is set to 768, but it is not centered into the page. So there are two different options we can go ahead and do to get this centered into the page. So first off, we could pass in another utility class of margin on the left and right of auto. So you can see that right here. All right, so if we pass that class onto here, we say MX and we do auto. And the cool thing I believe is another extension I'm using is HTML and CSS support, which is the reason why you're going to see these classes as I'm typing them out here. So that's pretty cool. And I would recommend using that extension for tailwinds as well. So if we save this and head over now, you can see that it's going to be centered into the page. But I don't really like that and I think there's a better way to go ahead and do this and that's going to be documenting here inside of the doc. So if I scroll down, you can see we have this customizing section. So what we want to do here is have our container centered by default and we can do that with customizing our project inside of a file called Tailwind config. Dot js. So that's the method I'm going to take here to center our container inside of our landing page here. So let me go ahead and remove this and let's begin to set up the ability to customize our Tailwinds project here. Now to create our configuration file, as you can see in the documentation, we have to run this command of npx tailwind css init 
into our terminal. And what this is going to do is create a minimal tailwind.config.js file at the root of our project here, which would look something like this. So let's go ahead and copy this and let's head over to our project here and let's open back up our terminal and it will open up a new one, which is fine. So let's go ahead and say npx tailwinds CSS and init that and we should see that configuration file be generated right here. All right, so what we want to do is inside of here we have this object of theme and we don't want to extend anything right now. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that as empty. But what I do want to do is inside of this theme object, I'm going to create a new object of container here. So if we head back to our documentation here on the container, you can see that what we need to do is we have our container object here now, and we need to pass the value of center to true here. Okay, so now if I say container and I put center here, if I can paste this, it's not working, we'll just say center and we'll set this equal to true. Now if we head back over here and we take a look at our project, you can see that it's not centered. Now, each time that we make a change here, whether it be in the tailwind config.js or the source style sheet here, we need to rerun our build command that we have inside of our package.json here. So if I go back to our first terminal here, let's just go ahead and click on that. And if we run our npm run build of tailwinds here, you should see now that once this is finished building here, we should be able to head back over to our page here and you can see that now our container is centered by default and we won't have to go ahead and put that additional utility class of MX Auto. Now one other class or one other thing I want to do here is if you head down there is no horizontal padding by default either on the container so in order for us to not have to use an additional utility class for padding we can add a padding value to our container as well. Now what I want to do for this is we're not going to have it say to padding we want to go ahead and give it a padding value here and we're going to say quotes one rem here, which is going to add 16 pixels of padding on each side of the container. So once again, we're going to have to rerun our build command here of tailwinds. And once this is finished building, we should see that on our container class. Now if we head back over here and we inspect this. You can see we're going to have that additional padding that we added to the left and right of one rem here. Now there are a few additional customizations I want to make to our project here and the first one's going to come on our container once again. Now currently our max width on the container is set to the current breakpoint value that we have here defined by Tailwind. So the max width that we want for our landing page here is going to be 1124 and as you can see here on the XL screen on the XL breakpoint and 2XL the max width is just way too large. So how we're going to fix this is we're going to head back over to our Tailwind's config here and we're going to create a new object called screens here. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to target those breakpoints. So we want to go ahead and set the max width on a large screen. So currently if we go back to the documentation here on large, the max width is set to 1024. What we want to do here is on large, you want to set this to 1124 pixels. And then we want to target our XL and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say 1124 pixels here. And then to target 2XL, because it has a number, we have to wrap this in quotes. So we're going to say 2XL here. And we're going to put a colon. And we'll say 1124 pixels here. Now what we need to do is head up to our terminal. And we're going to delete this, delete that one. And then we're going to rerun. Actually, that's the wrong one too. Let's go back to our first one here. And we're going to rebuild our uh, CSS here. And now once this is finished, you should see once we go over to our application here, or our keep calling application, our landing page, if I refresh this, you can see that the max width is going to be no larger than 1124. So if I inspect this and we make the screen a little bit larger, you can see that now, let me see here, that the container is getting set to a max width of 1124, which is going to align with what we have here in our finished demo landing page. So we're going to be using a custom font here from Google inside of our landing page here by the name of Poppin. So I've already went ahead and pre-selected all the font weights that we're going to be needing here for this landing page. And we're going to opt to use the import directive here. So let's go ahead and copy this. 
And let's head back over to our project folder here. And inside of our source style sheet here, we're going to paste that import directive in just below our Tailwind's directives of base components and utilities. So let's save that. And now what we need to do is head back over to our Tailwind config. And we're going to define a new object here inside of our theme of font family here. And what we want to do is we're going to give this a name of poppins and we want to set this equal to an array now inside of this array we're going to pass the value of poppins and then as a fallback we're going to say sans serif here okay so then we need to pass a comma right there to avoid that error and now we have access to use poppins inside of our project here so let's go ahead and actually run this and build so then what we can do to actually use this font because with this implemented like this we still aren't actually using it inside of our project so even though i built that out if i refresh this you can see that it's still going to be using the default font that tailwind is using which i believe is just sans uh ui sans serif okay so if we head back over to our project here and on the body we can go ahead and add a class here of font and then the name that we gave it, gave it inside of our Tailwind config, which was Poppins right here. So if we copy that, paste it, and then we head back over here, as you can see, now we are going to be using Poppins as our font family inside of our landing page here. Now, lastly, we're going to be creating some custom color classes that we're going to be using throughout our landing page here. Now, by default, Tailwinds comes with a pretty large palette of color classes that you can use inside of your project. But I want to show you how you can create your own custom colors and use those inside of your Tailwinds project here. So if we scroll down through the documentation here, there are a few ways that you can go ahead and do this. Now, the way we're going to be doing it here in this video is I'm going to extend the actual color palette and I don't want to override it. So if you scroll down here, you can see this section for extending the default. So we don't want to override all the colors that Tailwinds has to offer. We want to extend those and add some new ones. So how we do that is through this method right here. We have this extend object on our module exports or inside of our theme, I should say. And then we need to pass the colors object and all the color classes and color values that we want inside of our project here. So let's go ahead and begin to implement that. So inside of this extend right here, we're going to pass the colors. Now I'm going to copy and paste in the colors that we're going to be using for this uh, landing page here. So we have five. We have bookmark purple, bookmark red, bookmark blue, bookmark gray, and bookmark white. Now I named them bookmark. You can name them anything you want just to clarify that these are the custom colors that we're going to be implementing here. So what we need to do is I can save this and then we need to build our CSS again. And then once this is built out, we can actually use these inside of our markup here. Now, how we can use a custom color on a text, or if we want to change the text color, I should say, so we need to pass this H1 to class, and we need to say text right here. So once you define text, you then want to define the color that you want this text to be. So in our case, we named one of our values book mark, and we gave it a value of purple here. Okay, so we want this text to be the bookmark purple that we just went ahead and created. So now if I head back over to our landing page here, you should see now that we have this class of text bookmark purple and our text is that color of the bookmark purple that we just went ahead and define inside of our Tailwinds config. Okay, so with our customization all complete, let's begin working on our header here. So what I want to do is remove this H1 here as we don't need it. It was just for testing. And let's start with actually styling up our nav tag here. So we have the container class on here, which we're going to keep. Now, what we want to do is we want to set this nav tag to display flex. And how we can do that is with a class name of flex here. Okay, now if I head back over to our documentation here, if we go to the... Uh, let's see the layout section here and go to display. You can see that they have a whole list of options that you can use to display your elements. So we're going to be using flex here. Now on top of flex, we want to align all the items to the center. Now how we can do that with tailwinds is we can pass it the class name of item center, which is going to be equal to the property here of align items to the center. All right. So we'll, we'll go ahead and add items and you can see here that it's going to list some of those classes out here for us. So we want to say item center. Now, 
On top of this, what we want to do is we want to add some padding to the top and bottom. So we can do that with the class name of PY, and then we select the number that we want. So I'm going to say four in this case. So to show you where they have a list of all the options here, we can go to spacing and padding. You can see here they have P-0, and that's going to add padding to all sides. Uh, so you can see padding of the value four is going to be one rem. And if you just use P, it's going to add it to all sides. But if you add PX, I believe if you scroll down here a little bit, you'll see that uh, PY is going to be for top and bottom. And then PX is going to be for the left and right. All right. And the same thing goes for margin. So for margin, they have just M and the number, which is going to set margin to all sides. And they also have margin X, I believe. Let's see, if we scroll down, they have margin Y and then margin X. So the same thing as padding. Okay, so it makes sense when you think about it. So it's margin on the Y axis and then margin on the X axis. So their classes that they use here are pretty explicit and they tell you pretty much what you're going to be uh, doing to that element. All right, so we're going to add py4 which is one rem now we also want to add a margin top of four here to push it away from the top all right now what we also want to do is once we get past a certain break point i want to apply a different class here so in this case once we get past the small break point which i believe is around 628 pixels I want to increase this margin top here. Now, how we can add classes using the breakpoint media queries is we need to target that breakpoint. So in our case, small is SM, and then we're gonna put a colon, and then we want to put the class that we want to apply. So in my case, I'm gonna add a margin top, and we're going to increase this to 12 here. Okay, so inside of our nav tag, just to kind of show you how this is working when we get responsive, I'm gonna add this H1 uh, tag back here and if we go back over to our landing page here you should see that now we will have if I go to here our uh, our nav it's gonna be margin top 12 which is 3 rem but if I shrink this down to a smaller viewport you should see at around 600 it should go up to I believe we set it to 1 rem with the value of MT4 okay so that's how that works and how you can add simple media query classes to your actual elements here. All right, so let's go ahead and remove this. Now, what we want to do here is we're going to add a UL here for our, sorry, we're going to first start off with a div for our branding image. So this is set up to be a flex container and by default flex is always uh, going to be in a flex row. So we're going to be side by side here. So what we want to do is we're going to add a div and we're going to give it the class of py and one for padding on the top and bottom of one. And then I added this image folder here, which you can get from the finished repository. That's gonna have all the images that we're gonna need here for this landing page. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an image tag here. And for the SRC, we're gonna do dot slash and we're gonna go to images and we're gonna want the logo bookmark SVG here. Okay, and that's gonna be it for this uh, image right here. Now, the next thing we want to go ahead and create is going to be our UL for our navigation items here. So let's go ahead and give this a class. Now, what we're going to do here is we want to hide the UL on smaller screens. So we're going to display the hamburger menu instead. So what we want to do is by default, we want to have this UL be hidden. Okay, so we're going to do that with the class of hidden, which is going to set it to display none. Then when we get to a small screen, very similar to how we did it with our nav tag right here, we're going to set this to display flex. Okay, now to make this take up as much space as possible or the entire space and allow room for this image right here, we want to pass it the class of flex one. So if we head back over to our documentation, I'm going to try to show you where I'm finding all these as I go along to kind of explain what each one of these classes are doing. So if we head back over to our documentation here and we go to, I believe, just flex and we set it to flex one, what it's setting it to is flex one, one, zero percent. And if you scroll through the documentation here, you can see it says use flex one to allow an item or a flex item to grow and shrink as needed, ignoring its initial size, which is what we're doing here. OK, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, we want to justify all the content here inside of this UL to the right hand side. So to do that, we can use a similar class to what we did here with items 
Uh, this actually should be item center, not start here. So let's say item center here. That should not be start. So you can use a very similar class to our item center here to push the content to the right hand side. So we don't want to use align items. We want to justify the content to the end. So we're going to use a class called justify end here. And then we also want to align the items to the center, very similar to how we did in our nav element here. So we're going to say items and we'll say center here. Okay. Now there's a property on Flexbox that we can use to have space between our flex items, which is going to be gap here. So what I want to do is set the gap to 12 and I'll go ahead and reference this in our documentation here. You can see that we have this gap right here and we're going to be using gap 12, which I believe is equivalent to three rem. So we're going to have three rem worth of space in between each one of our uh, flex items inside of our UL here. Okay, so let's go ahead and add that. And then what we want to do here is for all the text inside of this UL, we want to give it the color of our custom configuration color here of bookmark blue. Okay, so to do that, as we referenced earlier, we go ahead and say text and then we define the color or the value of the class, which was bookmark blue. So let's type in book mark and you can see blue is populated right here. Okay. Now, for all the UL items here, we want them to be uppercase. So to have that happen, we need to pass the class of uppercase here, which is going to set uh, all the text to text transformation uppercase, or I think it's capitalized. Or actually, sorry, it's uppercase. I'm getting myself confused there. Okay. And then the last thing is we want to target the font size in here. Now, we haven't talked about this yet. And to do this, let's head down to our documentation here. And for font size, we're going to use a very similar class as we did for our font color. We're going to first reference the text and then we want to add a dash. And then we have all these values here of XS. So we have small, we have base, large, XL, 2XL, and it continues on all the way through 9XL. Now for this navigation, we're going to pass the value of text extra small, which is going to be a font size of 0.75 rem here. Okay. So we'll say text and we'll say XS here. All right, and that's gonna be our styling for our UL here. So let's actually add some LI, LI items here, or LI, I can't speak. So what we'll do here is we'll say features. Now, when we hover over these LI, so I have one here right now. So if I go back over to our landing page here, you shouldn't see that because we're on small, we're hiding it. But as we get to a larger screen, you can see that now we're going to see that LI, LI item. Jeez, I cannot speak and say that today. Now, when we hover over this, you want to have a cursor pointer, which right now we don't have. So to add that, what we can say here is we can add a class to our LI and we can say cursor dash pointer. And if we save that and head over here now, you'll see that we have a cursor pointer when we hover over our LI item here. All right, so let's go ahead and add the rest of these here. And we're going to have one that says pricing. And then we're going to have one that says contact here. Okay. And as you can see, when we save those, we're going to have this nice gap of three rem between each one of our items here. And we can hover over these with a cursor of pointer. Now, the last thing we need to create here is going to be our button here on our uh, navigation here. So what we're going to do is we need to come inside of this UL and instead of creating an LI, we're going to create a button tag here. Okay. And we're going to pass this the value type of button here. And inside of here, we're going to have it say login. Now, what we want to do is we're going to pass us a few class values here. Okay. Now to change. So we've talked about changing the text color with the uh, with the class of text and then passing it XS or with the text color, I should say that's for the font size. So we had text and then we pass it the value of the color class that we created. Now to change the background color, what we need to do is we're going to pass the value of BG here, and then we're going to pass our background color. So in this case, we're going to be using bookmark red here for the background. And we want to make this text white. So we're going to say text and we're going to say white here. Now, don't get this confused with our bookmark white. This is actually the uh, Tailwind's color default of white, which is simply going to be white. Okay. Then what we want to do here 
is we want to round the corners of our button. And to do that, if we head back over to our documentation, if we go to, let's see, where is this at? Let me scroll through here. It might be down here a little bit. Um, I believe it's border radius here. And you can see they have all these classes for um, adding border radius. So what we want to do is we're going to be using this rounded MD, which is going to have a border radius of 0.375 rim, which is equivalent to, I think about four or five pixels. Cause I believe five would be eight. So that sounds about right. All right. So let's add that class to here. So we're going to say rounded MD. And then we want to add some padding to the left and right and the top and bottom. So we haven't done any to the left and right, I don't believe. So to do that, we're going to say PX, and then we want to say seven here. And then we're going to add some padding to the top and bottom, which is going to be three. Okay. Now, if we head back over to our landing page here, you should see we now have this button. Okay. And then we need to also pass it the value of uppercase because it's not going to uh, by default, it's not going to look at this value on our UL and apply that. So we need to go ahead and say that directly here. So if we save that and we come over here now, you should see that it is uh, capitalized and that is looking great. Now, the last thing we need to add is when we get down to a smaller screen, we want to, we're hiding this, but we want to show our hamburger menu here. Now, how we're going to be showing our hamburger menu is going to be through a font Li or sorry, it's going to be through an icon library of font awesome. So in order to use that, we need to go ahead and actually import that here into our project. So to use this library, I'm here on cdnjs.com and I searched up font awesome. I'll leave the link down below in the description to this exact page right here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the link tag here and we're going to head back over to our project and just above our style sheet here, I'm going to copy and paste that link tag in and now we'll have access to use this inside of our project here. So just below our nav here, what I want to do is we're going to create a new div and this is going to have the class of flex here. Now, as you recall, what we did here is we are hiding this by default. And once we get to a small screen, we're displaying this as flex. So what we need to do is reverse this. So by default, we want to display this div, which is going to contain our icon as flex. And then when we get to small, we want to display this as none. So we're going to pass the class of hidden here. Okay. Now we also want to pass this to class of flex one, very similar to how we did our UL here. And to get this icon to the right hand side, we need to pass it the class of justify end as well. Now to get the actual icon here, let's head back to our browser and I have font awesome pulled up here in another tab and I searched up bars. So we're going to be copying this HTML tag here, which is an I class. All right. And then what we want to do is inside of this div, we want to paste this in here. Now, currently, if we take a look at this, it's going to be very small. Now, what we want to do is we want to pass it a text font size class. So we're going to be saying text here inside of this I class and we're going to be passing it to Excel here. OK, and that's going to increase the font size for us here. So if we head back over to our landing page here, you can see that looks a lot better and it is more proportionate to our um, actual navigation here. So that is going to do it for our header here or our navigation. So as we increase the font size here, our navigation is going to show and it's going to stay fixed at a max width of 1124. And if we scroll down here to make it responsive down to mobile size, you'll see that our navigation is going to disappear and then our hamburger icon will uh, be um, be displayed here instead of that. Now, moving along here, now that we have our first section out of the way, I'm going to start to speed some things up just a little bit. So most of the classes that we use within our header section here, we're going to be using throughout our landing page here, but just in different ways. So if you find yourself lost or kind of confused, just reference the documentation. They are great. And to be honest, I believe in my opinion that the class naming convention really goes ahead and tells you exactly what you're doing or applying to that element here. All right, so let's go ahead and collapse this header tag here. And let's go ahead and do a few line breaks below our header and add our comment for our hero section here. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna add a new section tag here and I'm gonna give this a class of relative. And what this is gonna do is it's going to position the section tag to be relative. All right, so pretty easy stuff. Now, what I want to do inside of this section tag here is create a new div to contain our hero section. So for that reason, I want to apply the container class. 
Now on top of this, I want to display our container here as flex. And we want to display this as a flex column reverse. So by default, if you are familiar and have worked with Flexbox, you'll know that when you display something as flex, it is automatically by default set into a row. Now on mobile, we want these things to stack. So we need to define this container as a flex column. Now, the reason why we're putting this reverse on here is because the order I'm gonna create it in is going to be the content, we're gonna have then the image. So on mobile, we want the image to be first and then the content to come second. And in the current order we're gonna do it in with the HTML, that's not how it would appear on the actual screen. So you can see here, if we scroll over to our landing page, our finished one, you can see that the markup here is on the left and the image is on the right. But when we inspect this here, what happens is that the image goes on top and the content goes on the bottom. And that is because we are using flex column reverse, which is reversing the order in which the, um, you know, the styling is reading the markup here. So hopefully that makes sense what we're doing here. So on top of this, what we want to do is add a media query change here. And then we want to change on large screens. We want to convert this, uh, div here to a flex row. Now we also want to put the items to the center. We want to add a gap between the children here of 12. So we're going to say gap dash 12. And then we're going to give it a margin on the top. We're going to say MT 14. And then we're going to make a media query change here on large screens and say MT and then we'll do 28. And that's going to do it for our container here. Now inside of this div, we're going to have two flex children of this container. So one's going to be the content on the left hand side. And then the right hand side when it's a flex row will be that image. All right. So what I'm going to do here is comment this out. So it's very explicit what we're doing here when we come back to read our markup later on. And I'm going to give us a comment of content here. Okay. So we're going to create a div and we're going to give it the class of flex. And then what we want to do is have it give it a flex or sorry, a class of flex one. Then we want this to be a flex column, but we don't want to reverse it. So we're just going to say flex column here to have it go in the correct order from top to bottom. And then we want to align the items to the center here. Now on large screens, we don't want our items to be to the center. We want them to be on the left-hand side. So we need to have it say align items start. Now that class we haven't used yet, but it's the same structure here. We're going to say items, but instead of saying center, we'll say start here. Okay. And now inside of this content div, what we want to do is we're going to pass it an H2. And for this class on here, what we're going to say is we're going to give it a uh, class of text book mark, and we're going to go blue. Okay. And then for the text size, we're going to have it start at three XL here. And then when we get to medium, we're going to give it, we're going to pass a media query. We're going to say text four. And then one more change on large, we're going to have it be text dash five, oops, five XL here. Okay. And then we want to have the uh, text of H2 be in the center when it's on a mobile here. So we can uh, achieve that by saying text and then passing it the value of center. Now on large screens, we don't want this. We want it once again, being on the left hand side. So we're going to pass the text dash left. And then the final class here, we want to push this uh, H2 away from our paragraph tag, which we're going to create. So for that reason, we're going to give it a margin bottom and we're going to say dash six here. Now for the content inside of this H2, we're going to pass, we're going to copy and paste it in here. It's going to say a simple bookmark manager. Okay. And that's going to do it for our H2. Now for our paragraph tag here, we're going to pass it the class of text bookmark here and we're gonna say gray. Then what we wanna do is give it a text uh, text size of large. So we're gonna say text dash large or LG. We want to align this text to the center. So we're gonna do it very similar to how we did it in our H2. We'll say text center. And then we want to say on large screens, text dash left here. Okay. And then we're gonna push it away from our buttons that we're gonna create with the margin, our MB dash six here. And for the content, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this in here. Now, the final section of our content here, we're going to go ahead and create a div and we're going to pass the class of flex here. Now we want to justify this content to the center so we can pass it the class of justify and say center here. And then what we want to do is if you're familiar with Flexbox and I've used it a few times here on the channel, when 
the flux container runs out of room to display the elements inside of the div, you can pass it a property of flex wrap and set it to wrap, okay? Now to achieve that here in Tailwinds, we need to pass it the flex wrap class here. And then for our children inside of here, I want to give it a gap of six, which I believe is like 16 to 20 pixels worth of space in between our items here. Now, if I didn't mention this before, which I think I did, this is gonna be the div for our buttons here. Now, one thing I want to address here is if we go back to our finished application here, I keep calling it application, our finished landing page, you can see that all of the buttons within our landing page here are mainly the same style. So we have this purple button, and then we have this white button. Now, the white button we only use one time, which is here in the hero section, but this purple button right here, we use one, two, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we use it eight times and we'd have to write out the same exact styles on our marker for that. Now there is an easier way around this to avoid doing all that if you're gonna be adding the same styles to a certain element and you can achieve that with what they call a base style within Tailwind. So what you can do is inside of your source style sheet, you can apply or give it, you can create a class and then use the uh, uh, the apply directive here and apply all the Tailwind's classes to that class and then use that single class to style up your element, which we're gonna go ahead and do. All right, so let's head over to our source style sheet and begin to implement the ability to style up our buttons with simply one or two classes instead of seven or eight. Now, creating a base style is just like creating any class you would in a traditional CSS style sheet here. So I'm gonna call this class BTN. Now, instead of actually applying like, you know, a background color here and passing it a color, you could do that, but that kind of defeats the purpose of really using Tailwinds here. So what we're gonna do is actually use the at apply directive here and use all the classes that Tailwinds provides us here within this selector. And then we're gonna apply this class name to our buttons inside of our markup sheet here. All right, so what we wanna do is we want to apply a shadow here to our button. So we're gonna say shadow, CSHA, shadow MD here. Then we want to apply, apply some padding to the top and bottom. So to do that, remember we do a PY and we pass it a value, which we're gonna be doing three. Now we wanna do some padding to the left and right of our button, so we're gonna say PX6. Now we also want to round the corners of our button here. We're gonna pass it the class of rounded MD. Now what we also wanna do is pass this button a transition uh, property or a class here. Now we haven't talked about this yet, so let me head over to the actual documentation and show you that where this is at. I believe it should be down, let's see here, transition property. So what you can do is to set a transition here and it's going to apply all these properties by default. So what we wanna also do is the default duration is 150 milliseconds and I wanna have that be a little longer. Now we can go ahead and alter that with a transition duration property here. We can just say whatever duration we want and you can see they have all these values right here. Okay, so let's head back over to our style sheet here and I'm gonna add the class of transition here. Okay, now don't worry about these errors right here you're getting, it's not going to affect anything, it's just the way VS Code is handling this. Uh, and then what we wanna do here is I'm gonna pass the duration class here and we're gonna say 300, I believe it's how you spell that. Okay, so that is going to be our button class. Now, we have two different button colors. Now we could just go ahead and apply the text color, or sorry, the background color to the button we want to uh, style up, but I wanna go ahead and create some other classes here for our BTN purple, and then I also wanna create one for BTN white here, okay? So inside of here, what I wanna do is we're gonna do another add apply and we're gonna say BG and we're gonna do bookmark purple for our purple color. And then we also want the text to be white in there. So we're gonna say text dash white, okay? And then for our BTN white class, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say add apply. We're gonna do BG book mark and we're gonna say our, our actually I think it was just white so BG bookmark white here all right and that's gonna do it for our classes we're gonna create here for our buttons so as you recall whenever we make changes to our global uh, or our source style sheet we need to go ahead and run our npm run build command so let's go ahead and do that let's go to our first one here and let's go ahead and build this out 
So with our build complete, we can now use those classes inside of our markup here. So let's open up this div that we created earlier and create our two button elements here. And we're gonna give these a type of button. And then let's duplicate this down once more. Okay, and then for the first one here, all we're gonna need to do is pass the two classes that we created. So the first one's gonna be BTN. And then we have our BTN purple here. And inside of here, we're gonna say, let's do get it on Chrome. And then for the second button here, we're gonna pass a BTN as well, but we also wanna pass a BTN dash white. And we're gonna have this one say, get it on Firefox here. Okay, so now if we head over to view those, we should now see we have these two buttons here. Now, I know this goes outside of the realm of never leaving your style sheet, but in my opinion, when you're gonna be reusing styles like this, especially on a button, it just makes sense to go ahead and add a base style. Now, you don't have to do this. You could have definitely went ahead and just apply these classes here as we have inside of these directly on our markup, but I wanted to show you a different way to go ahead and perhaps make it a little bit easier on yourself, especially when you're gonna be reusing a class as much as we are inside of this landing page here. Now, when we hover over our buttons here, we want to add a hover effect. So what I'm gonna do is show you how to add a hover effect using Tailwinds here. So in the documentation to add a hover effect to a button or you know your element, it's actually very simple. So all we need to do is add the hover prefix to the element that we want to add a hover effect to. As you can see down here, they had hover, colon, and then the actual class they wanted to apply on hover of that element here. Okay, so if we head back over to our HTML here, let's go ahead and add that. So we're gonna say hover. And what we wanna do here is change the background color to be BG, and we're gonna say book mark, that's spelled wrong, and we're gonna change it to white here. And then we also wanna add another hover here, and we're gonna say text, and we're gonna do black. So what we're doing here is, I can't spell that, let's see, there we go. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're going to literally be switching the buttons on hover. So when you hover over the purple button, it's going to turn into the white button and vice versa. So on this button here, we're gonna say hover, we're gonna change the BG to book mark, and we're gonna say, let's do purple here. And then we wanna say hover, and we want to do text and change that to white. So now we hover over our buttons here, on our site, you should see now this one's gonna to change to the button on the right, and then the one on the right is gonna to change to the one on the left on hover. Now we're all set with our content div here. Now the second child that we wanna create for this div of the container is gonna be for our image. So let's go ahead and create a new comment here and say image. And then we wanna create a new div, which we're gonna give it the class of flex to start here. Now we want to justify the content within this div to the center, so we're gonna say justify center here. We want to have this child div take up equal amounts of space between the two here. So if we pass flex one to both of these, that means they're both gonna take up equal amounts of space inside of the container, okay? Now we want to give this a margin bottom uh, of 10 on mobile. We're gonna target it on a medium screen here and we're gonna say MB and we're gonna give that a little bit larger of 16. And then on large here, we want to go ahead and give it a margin bottom of zero. So we're gonna say MB dash zero. Now, one other class that we haven't used is we're gonna give this image a Z index of 10. Now, the reason why is because this right here that you're seeing on the finished version of the landing page is actually not a part of the image. We're going to be setting this absolute to uh, this div right here, okay? So in order to have this image over the top of this, we need to provide a Z index higher than zero so that it goes over the top of this uh, rounded rectangle right here, okay? So to give it a Z index within Tailwinds, we say Z dash, and we have all these options here of 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, and we're gonna pass it 10. And that's gonna give it a Z index of 10. Now, inside of this div, we want to have our image here. So we're gonna say the SRC is gonna be dot slash images, and we're gonna use this hero background dot PNG. Now, a couple classes we're going to provide here are gonna be for the width and height, okay? So in order to avoid any confusion here, since we have not yet used this, let's head over to the documentation and kind of show you how we define width and height 
within Tailwinds here. So as you can see, you can define width with W6 here, and that's going to mainly, if you set it with numbers, it's mainly going to set it to a specific width in regards to rem. Now, what they have, if you scroll down here a little bit more, is they have these fractional units here with you know, W-1 divided by 2, which is 50%, and then it kind of, you know, breaks down into fractions. So you can see that 2 thirds will be 66. They have 1 fourth for 25, so they do kind of like quarters. Then they have 6, which you can see here they do uh, 1 through 6, they do 1 through 5. So they have a pretty good way of breaking it down to finding exactly what you need, and it works the same way for uh, height as well. They're all the same kind of format here. So that's how we're going to be customizing the width and height is by using these fractional width values right here or these width classes. Okay, so on our image here, we're going to start off with a width. So we're going to say W5 divided by 6, and we're also going to say height dash five divided by six here. Now, when we get the small screens here, we're gonna say width and we're gonna change it to three fourths. So we're gonna say three divided by four and we're gonna go ahead and say the same thing. We're gonna do small and we're gonna say height dash three divided by four. And then when we get to medium, we want them to be full height and width. So we're gonna say W full and then we're gonna do medium again and say height full, okay? And that's going to be our um, image here. So if we save that, we head over to our landing page here. You should see now they're side by side and things look a little bit more in line as they are here on our demo. Now, the last thing we need to create here on this hero section is going to be this rounder rectangle that we're going to position absolute to our container div here. Now, where we're going to create this element is outside of our container here. So let's go ahead and collapse this and let's go ahead and create a new comment here for, let's see, rounded We'll say rounded rectangle here. Okay. And what we want to do is we're going to create a new div here. All right. And we're going to apply it quite a few classes here. So hopefully this isn't too confusing what we're going to be doing. So first off, we do not want to show this on smaller screens and we know exactly how to do that. We can pass it the class of hidden to display none. Now, once we get to medium screens here, we want to allow this to be visible. So we're going to pass it the class of block. So block is going to set this div to display block. All right. Now, one class we also want to pass that we haven't used is going to be overflow. And we're going to say dash hidden which let's see here, this is going to hide any overflow that we have from this rectangle off the page so you don't see it. All right, now we wanna give this rectangle a background color of book mark, and we're gonna say dash purple here. And we want to go ahead and provide it a border radius on the left-hand side of full. So it's fully 50% rounded. So how we can do that is with a class of rounded, which we already used before. So before we use rounded MD, but this time we want to target the left-hand side. And how you do that is with dash L, and then we can pass the class or dash full. So rounded dash L dash full is going to round the left-hand side entirely of this div right here. Okay. Now, if you recall, we set this section to be position relative. So what we want to do is we want to position this rounded rectangle absolutely to that. So we're going to say absolute here. Absolute. All right. Now, if we save this and take a look, you should see that we don't have anything. Now, the reason is because we haven't defined this rectangle with a specific height and width. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass it a height value of H.80. OK, and then what we want to do is we're going to pass it a width value of two dash divided by four here, which is going to be 50 percent width. OK, then if we save that, you should now see that we're going to have this image, but it is in the correct or it's going to be in the absolutely wrong place. You want it to be over here. So we need to do some positioning to this. So what we want to say here is we're going to say top and we're going to pass it the value of 32 here. OK, now where I'm getting these numbers from, since we haven't really touched upon the positioning here, is if we head over to our, let's see here, our documentation. Let me see if I can find it here. So we have under the layout top, right, bottom and left, and they have all these values right here. OK, so when you pass it the top 32, if we scroll down here, let's see, there's a lot to these is to give you exact number of what we're actually setting it to. So top 32 is going to be 
8 rem, which is probably around like 96 pixels. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to set the right to zero because currently it is sitting on the left hand side. If we pass it right of zero, it's going to push it all the way over to the right hand side here. So let's go ahead and say here, we'll say right dash zero. Okay. So if we do that, that's going to style it up for a uh, medium breakpoint view. So right now it looks like this, but if we were to inspect it here, uh, it'll look a lot better once you get down to a smaller screen. And I guess it still doesn't look great. We might have done something wrong here. So it appears, and I'm pretty sure maybe many of you caught this, I spelled relative wrong here for the class name. That's not how you spell it. It's relative like that. And that would explain why it is not positioning correctly as to how we have our code here right now. So now if we head over to our landing page, you can see that it looks a lot better. But as we get up to a bigger screen size, we still need to do some adjustments there. But on a smaller screen like medium, you can see that it is positioned a lot better. And then once we get down to a smaller screen size, I believe at medium, it is going to be hidden. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up the styling here. So what we want to do is target the uh, diff here on a large when it gets to the LG breakpoint. So we're going to say LG and to get a negative position on either calling top, right, bottom, left, or right, we can pass it the minus sign, then say bottom here, and then we can pass the value that we want. So we're going to pass it a bottom value of negative 28. Okay. And then what we want to do here is we're going to say LG and we're going to go ahead and say the same thing for right. We want to pass it a negative value here and we're going to say right dash 36. Oops, that's 26. We need to say 36. And we'll change that to 36 here. So now if we go inspect this here on a larger screen, you should see that it looks a lot better and it is positioned how it should be. All right, so that's going to go ahead and do it for our hero section here. Now, next up here, we're going to be working on our feature section. So let's head back over to our markup here. And to save some space, I like to collapse these things as a personal preference. So let's do a line break here and we'll do a comment for features. All right. And we'll go ahead and create a new section tag here. And we're going to pass it a few class values. So as you can tell here, we're going to be doing some alternating colors for our background here. So this is where we're going to be using that custom color we had for bookmark white to alternate between a white background here on certain sections and this sort of lighter shade of white here on some of the sections within our landing page here. All right. So what we're going to do here is we want to pass this the class of BG and we're going to say bookmark and we're going to do white. And we also want to give it a padding on the top and bottom of 20. So we're going to say PY-20. We're going to do a margin on the top of 20. And then on, let's see here, large screens, what we want to do is a MT60 like that. Okay. Now inside of this section, we're going to be having a few different things. So we're going to be having our heading and then we're going to have three separate different features. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this organized and we're going to have another comment here to let us know this is our heading markup. And then we want to do a div here and we're going to have, let's see, we'll just do div and we'll open up our classes here. So the first thing we want to do is we're not using a container, as you can see, around anything here so far. We're going to be setting a max width on this heading div with some of the tailwinds with classes. All right. So what we want to do is we want to target on a small screen here. We want to have it have a width of three divided by four, which is about 75%. And then when we get to large screens here, we want to give it a width of five divided by 12, which is just under 50%. It's like 45 or 44 or something like that. Okay. And then to position this in the middle, we can pass it a class of margin X and then say auto. Okay. And then we want to give it a padding on the left and right of two here. Now inside of this div, we're going to have an H1 and let's go ahead and put a line break there. Now for this header tag, what we want to do is we're going to pass a class here of text-3xl and then we're going to have text be in the center here and then we're going to give it the color. So we're going to say text bookmark blue 
and we're going to have the features uh, inside of this H1 as the actual content. Okay, now for our paragraph tag here, we want to align this to the center as well. So we'll say text center, but we have to do that inside of a class. So we'll say text center here. And then we want to use the light gray text. So we're gonna say text, book, mark, and we'll say gray. And to give it some separation from our heading, we're gonna say empty and do four. And now for this content, I'm just going to copy and paste this in like that. And if we head over to take a look at this, you should see that now we have this right here. So what we're doing is on medium and large screens, we're going to restrict the width. But once you get below that small viewport, it's just going to be a full 100% of the available space that we have. Okay. And that's why we added that padding around it to push it away from the left and right when we are on the smaller screens. And we leave it on throughout the whole uh, actual uh, div here just because it doesn't make too much of a difference. All right, so that is that. Now we need to start working on our features here. So for the most part, the features are going to be very similar to our hero section here in terms of the markup and positioning this uh, rectangle here um, within this uh, actual feature div here. All right, so let's go ahead and begin to work on those. So what we wanna do is below our heading div here, I'm gonna create another comment to, you know, keep things organized. And we're gonna say feature number one, okay? And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have a div and we want to pass a few classes here and we're gonna say relative again. So I think I spelled this already wrong, so let's not do that again. And I did it again, so relative. And we want to give this a margin top and we're going to say MT-20. And then on large screens, we're going to say MT-24. So a little bit larger of a separation on larger screens here. Now inside of here, we want to pass another div and we're going to give this the class of container. We're going to say flex. We'll do flex cowl. And then on large screens, we're going to go to a flex row. We're going to say items center justify J U S T I F Y there and say center. And then we want to give it a gap on the X, which is going to be on the left and right of 24. We don't want to do a gap 24 because it's going to go on the horizontal and vertical axis. So we can go ahead and pass the X value here in between the number and the gap uh, value here to only have it on the uh, left and right, or between the two uh, vertically, I suppose, or whatever way you want to go ahead and picture that. All right, so for the most part, this is going to be the same exact class structure that we had inside of our hero section here. So I'm going to kind of take this a little bit more quicker throughout these features here. Okay, so we have next up, we're going to have our image, and we're going to do a div here, and we're going to give this a class of flex. We're going to say flex one. We want to justify this to the center. We're gonna give it a Z index here of 10, margin bottom of 10, and then also on large screens here, we're gonna say margin bottom and we're gonna set that to zero. Now inside of here, we're just gonna have our image tag. So we'll say image like that. And we're going to look for our image here of features tab number one, okay? Now for the classes, what we want to apply are going to be the same exact classes that we gave our hero section here of our image. So we want the width five, six, and we want the height five, six. Then we're gonna do small, we're gonna say three fourth, and then once we get to a medium, we're gonna do full. So I'm just gonna save some time here and copy those classes in like that, and that should save. And that's going to do it for our image here. Now next up, we have our actual content here. So what we're gonna say here is we're going to pass another div and we're going to do, let's see, class flex. Let's see, flex and flex one. We're gonna say flex cowl here. We want to align the items to the center. And then on large screens, you want to say items dash start here. All right, now inside of this, we're gonna have an H1 and we're gonna have this have a class of text-3xl. We're gonna do text book mark blue. And then we want to pass the first feature heading here, which is gonna be bookmark in one click. So we'll paste that in there like that. Then next up, we're gonna have our paragraph tag here, which is gonna have a class of text book mark gray. 
we're going to have it have a margin on the top and bottom. So we're going to say MY4. We want the text to be center here. Now, once we get to a large screen, we want to revert this back and say text to the left. And then we want to target the width and height for this very similar to how we did inside of our, uh, where we do it inside of this heading div right here. So what we're going to do is on small screens, you want the width to be, let's see, three divided by four. And then once we get to a large screen here, we want the width to be full. So we can say W dash full. Okay. And now for the content here, we're going to paste this in and we'll do that. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we need to import or we need to do our button here. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the buttons are going to be the same exact throughout most of the application here, or I keep calling it application, most of the landing page here. So what I'm going to do is because we've already created this markup, we're going to come down to our button tag right here. And we actually want to get this one that says get it on Chrome and we're going to collapse this again. And let's just come down below our paragraph tag here and paste that in. So you can see here we have our BTN, BTN purple, and then we have our hover effect here to change it on hover. Now what we want to do here is just change out the content to say more info. Okay, so now if we head over to take a peek and see how things are looking, you should see that we have this view right here. Now, the last thing that we're missing is going to be this rounded rectangle, which is going to be the exact same styling as we did here on the hero section, but we just need to adjust a few of the positioning values here. Okay, so to save some time again here, and we can just go inside of this hero section and we can grab this code for our rounded rectangle and we can collapse this. And right below this div with a container, we're going to paste in this rounded rectangle here. Now, what we want to go ahead and do here is we're going to keep the hidden and we want to change the breakpoint here from medium to large. And then we have the, uh, the background color purple is going to stay. Now, instead of it having a rounded left, we want to change it to the rounded right here. Okay. And then we're going to keep the height at 80, position absolute, width to fourth. And we can get rid of this top and uh, right values here because we're only going to have a display on large. So we don't need to worry about actually targeting these on the media query. So we can save that. But what we want to do is change some of the values in here. So instead of saying negative 28, we're going to do 24. And then instead of saying right 36, we're going to change this to left. Okay. So now if we head over and take a look, you should see that we're going to have this view right here. And if we go to a bigger screen, you're going to have it look like this. And then if we inspect this here, we can see that once we get below a large screen, those are going to disappear. This is going to collapse and then we're going to have it convert to a mobile view and it's going to start stacking here. So now for the rest of the features here, it's going to be the same exact styling and markup. We're just going to need to flip flop them in terms of the order because we're going to have them alternating from the image on the left to the image on the right, every other feature here. Now for our additional features here, it's actually going to be very easy. We're just going to be copying and pasting in the code we have for feature one in for feature two and three here. So let's go ahead and duplicate this and let's scroll down here and we're going to change this to feature two. Now a few things that we need to change here. First off is on large screens, I want to change the margin top to a value here which I believe was going to be 52. So we're going to say empty and 52. Now, if we save this and we go take a look at things, you'll see that number one, everything looks good, but we need to change out the content and the image here. But we also want to alternate the view of the image and the content. We want to flip flop them. So one easy way to go ahead and do this is on our large media query here, we want to define it to be a flex row. All we need to do is say flex row reverse to reverse the order so it reads content then image. So if we save that, you'll see, let me see, do we not save it? Uh, if we save that, you'll see that they're flip flop. Now, the one issue here is that our rectangle here needs to be positioned to the right hand side. So let's go ahead and fix that really quick. So instead of saying uh, the left 36, we're going to change it to right. And if we do that, you'll see that now we're on the right hand side. But the one issue is that we are rounding the wrong side as well. So we can change this from rounded right to rounded left. And there we go. Now what we need to do here is we want to change out the image and the content. So let's head back up to our image here. 
And we're going to say number two here for features tab number two, that's the image. And then the content in here is going to be intelligent search. So I'm gonna copy in and paste this here. All right, and then for the paragraph text here, let me just copy and paste this in as well. It's going to say, our powerful search feature will help you find safe sites in no time at all. No need to trawl through all of your bookmarks here. I wonder if that's supposed to be crawl. I don't know, I copied and pasted that from the comps, so that would make more sense about crawl. Maybe we'll say crawl. All right, so there we go. If we take a look now, we should see that we have our different image here and we have our intelligent search here. Now, for our third feature here, we're going to want to copy the first one again because we don't want to flip flop it here. So let's just copy and paste this here and let's go right below feature two and we're gonna paste in our new feature of three. So we'll put feature three here. And like we did change our margin top here in feature two, we wanna change feature three to 52. We're going to keep it as it is because we want the initial ordering of image to content. And then what we need to do is change out the image here. So it's gonna be three. And then for the content here, it's going to say, or for the heading, it's gonna be share your bookmark. So we're gonna change this. And then for the text, let me copy and paste this in as well. It's going to be easily share bookmarks and collection with others, create a shareable link that you can send to, uh, you can send at the share of a click of a button, or I butchered that, but you get the point. Now we can keep all of this the same here too. So if we take a look, that should go ahead and complete our features here. So these are pretty similar in the formatting here. So hopefully you guys aren't too confused about that. So if we take a look, you should see we have our bookmark in one click. We have our hover effect on the button, our tells and search, and then we have share your bookmarks here. Okay, then so next up here, we're gonna be working on our download section, which is gonna have our cards. And for this section, we're going to be using the grids. So let's head back over to VS Code and get started. So just below our feature section here, let's create a new comment and we're gonna say, download here. Now let's go ahead and create our section tag. So we'll say section and we're gonna pass this a class of padding on the top and bottom of 20. So we're gonna say PY20 or it's not really 20 but we're gonna pass a class of PY20 and we're gonna do margin top and we're gonna set that to 20 as well. Now for the heading here, it's going to be the same markup we had for our feature section here. So what I'm gonna do to save some time here and reduce the redundancy of typing this all out again, I'm just gonna copy and paste this section here and we're gonna change out the contents. So we'll change out the heading here to download the extensions and then I'll grab the description for this section and paste it in here as well. Okay, so that is going to be our heading here. So pretty simple. Most of the headings are going to be the same throughout the rest of the project as we have here for uh, download the extension and our frequently asked questions. So they're all gonna be very similar. All right, so now what we wanna do is actually create our container for our cards here. So right below our heading, I'm going to create a new comment here and we're gonna say cards, okay? And we're gonna create a new div and we're gonna pass this div the class of container to contain everything. Now we haven't yet introduced how to actually create a grid or I should say define a grid here in Tailwind. So let's head over to the documentation here. And if we go to layout here and display, all we need to do is scroll down here and you can see that we need to pass it the class of grid, which makes sense. So if we do that, we're going to put on that container or that element display grid. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, what we wanna do here is we need to define how many columns we want for this grid. So let's head back to the documentation here. And we can see here on Flexbox and Grid, we have all this options right here. And where we wanna go is to the grid template columns here. So the class structure is pretty easy to understand. So grid cows one, you're gonna have one column. You have grid cows two, you're gonna have two, three, and so on. So it's pretty explicit what we're gonna be doing here. So what we wanna do is we're gonna do some media query things here for this grid. So when we first start off, we're gonna be looking at it as a mobile first approach here. So we're gonna say grid, we're gonna say cows, and we're gonna do one. Then when we get to medium screens here, we're gonna say grid, we're gonna do cows, and then two, 
And then once we get to large screens, we're gonna say grid, cows, and we're gonna do three. All right, so some pretty easy stuff to understand here. Once we get to a larger screen, we're going to allow for more columns. And then on the larger screen, we're going to allow for our default view, which is going to be our three cards here. Now, we also used a property on our Flexbox container a few times here, so I'm not really sure where that was at. It might have been on the feature here, where we passed it a gap between the children. Now, we can do the same thing here for our cards. So what I want to do is I want to pass a gap, and we're going to say 16 here. All right. And then what we want to do is I want to set a max width for this container. Now you recall, if we go over to the width settings here, let's go ahead and find it. Uh, what we wanna do, I believe is gonna be the max width. So you can see here that we can set the max width to the certain uh, rem sizes here, but we can also set them to the actual uh, what do you want to call this? The breakpoints that we have within tailwinds here. So what I want to do for this is I want to limit this to be a max width of 1024 pixels. So a little smaller than our initial container. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to copy that class and then we're going to paste it on here. Okay, so simply what our container is going to do is still apply that padding and the max width, but we're going to be reducing it just a little bit more with this class right here. So hopefully that doesn't or isn't too confusing. And then what I also want to do for this grid is I want to put a margin top and we're going to say MT and pass a value of 16 here. And that's going to be initially our grid container here. So now what we need to do is actually create our grid items here. So just as we did our features here, I'm going to create the styling and the markup here for one card. And then they're all going to be the same, except we're going to swap out the content here. So let's go ahead and put a comment here and we're going to say card one here. Now for the markup, we're going to have a div and we're going to go ahead and create that and we're going to pass it a few classes here. So first off, we want to have each card display as flex. Now initially, this is going to be a flex row. We want these to stack. So we're going to say flex cow here and we want to round these cards with a border radius. So we're going to say rounded MD and then we want to give this a shadow. So we're going to say shadow MD. And then we are gonna add some margin here, but I want to show you how these cards are going to initially look without the margin, because we're gonna give them a staggered effect like this right here, where they're gonna kind of be descending to the bottom right here, where they're gonna kind of get lower and lower as you go down, okay? But I'll show you how we'll do that in just a moment here. Okay, so now inside of here, what we wanna do is we're gonna have a, another div and this is gonna have the class of P6 for padding six. And then what we also wanna do is this is gonna be a flex and we're gonna say flex column here as well. And we want to position all the items to the center. So we're gonna give it a class value of item center here. Now we're gonna have our image here because we're gonna have the logo here. Then we're gonna have our heading for the browser we're going to. And then actually I realized that I never changed these. So those should also be changed here to the proper actual browser. And then we're gonna have this minimum version text right here. Then we'll have this nice border to separate this from the button and then we'll have our button. All right, so that's going to be the layout. So let's go ahead and get our image in here. So we're gonna say images and then we want the logo Chrome, okay? And then we don't need to pass any classes to our image here. What we wanna do next is we're gonna have an H3 and we're gonna give this, oops, that's not how you spell class. So we're gonna say class. We're gonna do margin top, we're gonna to pass a value of five. Margin bottom, we're gonna pass that a value of two. Then we want to give it the text color and we're gonna say book mark and we're gonna go blue. And then we want this to be text LG here. And we're gonna say add to Chrome. All right. And then lastly here, what we wanna do is pass our paragraph tag, which is gonna have the class of Margin bottom two. We're gonna give this a light gray text. We're gonna say text book mark gray. And then we want this to be font light. So I'm not sure if we talked about this class right here. So these are going to actually affect the font weight. So if we head over here and we go down to the typography section here, you're gonna see that we have a font weight option right here. 
Now this is going to determine what font weight you have. So we're going to be using font light, which is going to be a font weight of 300. Okay. So that's where we're going to get that from. And here's where you can find all the different classes for the different uh, styles of font weight here. Okay. Now what we want to do is next up, we want to have our border. So we're going to pass it a HR here and we want to give this a class. So let's see here, we're going to give this a border. So we haven't talked about borders either. So let me show you where we're going to find that. And we can go, I believe to borders here. And we want to, I believe, start in the border style. Let's see here. Where would you find the borders? A border width. So here we go. So first off, you need to define a border width. So you can do all these different properties here. You can pass border, which will be all the way around, but then you can also pass border to the top, right, bottom, and left. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a border bottom and we're gonna pass it the value of just border B and that should be one, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Ah, uh, yeah, see that's right here. So that's gonna go ahead and give it the border bottom width of one pixel. All right, so we're gonna say border B. And then what we want to do here is we want to give this a color so we can pass it the border prop class here and we can give it the actual color. So we're going to say book mark and we're going to go white like that. Okay. Now the last thing we need to go ahead and do is going to be our button here, which we've already went ahead and created. So I'm going to go ahead and go to our feature and we're going to copy this button right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and grab that. And then what we wanna do here is we're gonna put it inside a div. We're gonna pass it the class of flex and we're gonna give it a padding around all sides and we're gonna say P6 here, okay? Now what we wanna do is we're gonna pass in our BTN, BTN purple, and then we have our hover and our uh, hover properties here. And then we want to change the text here to add and install extension, okay? Now, one additional class that I want to provide this is flex one, because currently we have this div as flex and we want this button to take all the space up we have. So if I currently go over to this right now on our landing page, you'll see that the button is not taking up the full width of the card here. So to do this, we need to go ahead and pass it. We'll say flex one and that should go ahead and make it take up the entire space. And it looks like we forgot to put in the minimum version copy right here. And there we go. All right, so that should go ahead and do it for our card layout. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is copy and paste the rest of these down here. So let's go ahead and do this. And we'll go one and two. And if we save that, you should see now that we have three cards. You just need to go ahead and change out the content and the images here. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's see here, we have our card one. And then I wanna put these comments in between so we know where they're at. So let's say card two like that and then card three like that. So let's go ahead and change out these images here. So we'll just go ahead and remove this and we'll say Firefox and we'll go add to Firefox like that. And then we'll keep everything else the same here. And then let's go ahead and collapse this. And then we'll come down to our other image here and let's go ahead and find this one and we're gonna say opera. So we'll copy the name here and we'll paste that in there at opera and that should go ahead and do it. So now we should have all three cards displaying each one of the browsers to add. Now, as I mentioned, we want to get this staggered look right here. So how can we do that? Well, it's pretty easy to achieve and all we're gonna need to do is pass it some margin values here, okay? So what we're gonna do is on the first card here, we only want to target this on large because we're gonna stack and we already have this gap property here which is gonna separate them. So we don't need to pass this margin value on any other size besides large. So on large, we're gonna pass it, on the first one, we're gonna say margin bottom and we're gonna give it the value of 16 here. So what that's gonna do is it's going to push this down so you can see here we have all this extra space here. So clearly right now they did not do anything. Now what we wanna do is on our card two, we're gonna target large and we're gonna say margin top and we're gonna say eight. And then on large again, we wanna target the margin bottom and we're gonna say eight here. And I just realized we probably could have passed this to margin Y and changed that to eight and got rid of that with one, okay? So did a little bit of 
uh, refactoring there. And as you can see now, this one got pushed down a little bit and this one still needs to be adjusted. But you can see we're gonna have this staggered look right here by simply just using the margin values here. Okay, now all we need to do for the last one here is pass it a media query of large and we're gonna say margin top and do 16 here. And that should go ahead and give us the staggered a look as they are descending down to the right here. All right, so that is going to do it for our cards. And if we go and inspect it here, let me show you how this is going to collapse. So once we get down to a certain view, you can see that now they're gonna be in this two column uh, setup here. And if we get down a little smaller, they should respond to a one column uh, stack here so that it is responsive and looks good on mobile. All right, then, so the next section here we're gonna be working on is going to be our frequently asked questions. So let's head back over to VS Code and right below our section tag for download, let's do a few line breaks here and we'll say FAQ, okay? And then let's go ahead and open up our section tag here and we'll put that into the middle of the screen. Now we wanna pass some classes to the section tag here. So we wanna change the background color to our customized color of bookmark white. So we're gonna say BG and we'll say bookmark and we'll do white here. And we also wanna add a padding to the top and bottom and we're gonna say PY and give that the value of 20. All right, so as I mentioned, we're going to be having a the headers here for all these are gonna be the same. So I wanna wrap the entire FAQ first off in a container class and then we're gonna have our header here. So what I'm gonna do is just copy and paste this heading we have from our download and we're gonna paste it inside of this container. Now, obviously we want to change out the uh, titles here. So we're gonna say frequently asked questions here, and then let's copy and paste in this content for our paragraph tag here, okay? And that's going to be our heading. Now, just outside of this heading or below it, we want to create our FAQ items here. So we're gonna say FAQ and we'll do items as a comment here, just to kind of separate some things. So we're gonna be displaying these FAQ items using Flexbox. So we're gonna create a div here and we're gonna give the class a flex. Now we want to have this in a column. So we're gonna say flex column. And we also want to alter the width of the actual FAQ items here. So we're gonna go ahead and say SM and we're gonna say three, oops, we wanna do W dash three or divided by four. And then when we get to large here, which this is about 75%. And then when we get to large here, we're gonna say width and we're gonna do five divided by 12, okay? So very similar styling to um, our heading here, okay? And then we want to give this a margin top of 12. And then we want to center this by saying MX auto here. All right, now let's actually get into creating each one of our flex items here or our FAQ items. So it's pretty easy. So let's go ahead and create a div here and we're going to give this a class of flex. Now we want to have the items in the center. So we're gonna say items and we'll say center. And we wanna give it a border on the bottom here. So if we go over to our actual demo here, you can see we have this border on the bottom here. So we'll say border. B, which will give it a border on the bottom of one. And to give it some separation, we're gonna go ahead and pass it a padding on the top and bottom of four, okay? Now inside of here, we're gonna have a span and we want to give this the class of flex one, okay? And then we're gonna have our first question here, which is gonna be, what is a bookmark? All right. And then we're gonna be using Font Awesome to actually get our Chevron icon in right here. So I already have this pulled up on Font Awesome. So I'm just going to copy this HTML here that they provide us and we're going to paste it inside of our flex item container here. Now, if we take a look at this, it should look pretty good so far. If we come down here, you can see we have our item here, which all of them will be the same. Now, we want to change the color of this chevron here, okay? So, what we can do is, since this is gonna be considered a actual font, we need to pass it a text color. So, what we're gonna say here, we'll do a space, we're gonna do text, bookmark, and we're gonna say purple, and that'll go ahead and actually change the color of the chevron here. And I realize I spelled book wrong, okay? Now, those are gonna be our flex items here, so all I'm going to do is copy this down three more times, so one, two, three, and then we're going to just change out the question here. So the next one's going to be, how can I request a new browser? So we'll go ahead and get rid of this, put that in there. 
and then we will put this right here all right and then we have our last one here which we'll put right in there okay so this section is just about done so what we want to also do is provide it a button here so let's go ahead and grab our button from one of our cards here it's going to be the same setup so we'll go ahead and grab this okay and then let's paste it inside of our FAQ container here. So I'll put that like that. Now, a few things we're going to have to change here. So we're still going to provide, actually, we don't want to provide it flex one anymore. What we do want to do is provide it the class of flex here. And we want to align this button to the center. So previously on the card, we wanted it to take up the full amount of space. So if I save this right now and we go over, you can see the button's taking up the full amount of space, which we don't want. We only want it to be in the center and we want it to take up only the space that it needs. So we can pass it the class of self. Let's see here. Self center here, which is going to justify the actual button here to the center. And you can see that it's only going to take up the space that it needs. And we want to remove this content and change out or change it out to more info like that. Okay. Now what we also want to do to push it away from our items here is give it a margin on the top. So we'll go ahead and say here MT 12 and that should go ahead and push it away from the top. And that is going to do it for our FAQ here. So if I go ahead and inspect this and check it on mobile to make sure it's all working correctly, we should be able to see that it should still look good on mobile. It's not really going to stack because it's already stacked here, but you can see it's going to take up more space. And then once we get down to a smaller view, it's going to take up the full amount of space available. And that's because of the width that we define. And you can see here when we get down to a smaller screen, such as mobile for phone, it still looks good. Okay, then so next up here, we have our stay up to date or our contact section. So let's head over to VS Code and we'll do a few line breaks to separate ourselves away from our FAQ section here. And we'll add a new comment for contact us here. All right, so we'll start off with our section tag here. Now we want to give this a background color of our custom bookmark purple. So we'll say BG here and we're gonna say bookmark and we'll do purple. And for this whole entire section here, we want the text to be white. So instead of actually defining that text color on each one of these elements here, we can just go ahead and pass it here on the entire section wrap. So we'll say text white. And then we also want to give it some padding on the top and bottom. So we're going to say PY and we're going to give it a value or a class of 20. Okay. Now inside of here, let me go ahead and actually go in the right spot. We want to have a div of the class of container to wrap our entire contact section. And then I'm going to have a div in here for all the content. Now I want to pass a few classes on here, which we want to constrict or reduce the width of our actual section here. As you can see, it's a lot smaller than the normal max width allowed. So what we're going to do on this class right here is we're going to pass it the small breakpoint. And at this breakpoint, we wanted to take up the width, which is going to be three fourths or 75% of the available uh, space. So we're going to say W three divided by four. Okay. And then on large screens, what you want to do is you want it to take up 50%. So we're going to say W and we'll do two divided by four. Okay. So that way it'll take up 50%. And then we want to say MX auto to center everything into the middle. All right. And then we're going to have our P tag here, which this is going to be for that little bit of a branding. We not branding that little bit of a stat right here saying 35,000 have already joined. So for this class or for this uh, paragraph tag, we're going to pass it a few classes. So first off, we want to make this a little bit lighter of a font. So we're going to pass the class of font light. We want this to be uppercase. So we're going to say uppercase like that. We want to align the text to the center. So we'll say text center and we want a margin bottom to separate it from our other additional uh, elements we're going to have by, or we're going to give it the value of eight here. Okay. And then let me just go ahead and copy and paste in this content here. All right. Now below this, what we want to do is give it an H1 and we're going to give this a class of three RC text. And we're going to say three XL. And we, we want to align the text to the center and that's going to be it here. And we want to copy in this, content here as well, which it's going to say, stay up to date with what we're doing. All right. Now the next portion we want is actually going to be for our input and our button. So for this, we're going to want to create another div and display it as flex so we can get the input and the button 
in a side by side or in a row. So we'll say it, we'll create a div here and we're gonna pass it a class and we're gonna say flex. And then what we're gonna do here is we want to target it first on mobile. So we want them to stack. So we're gonna say flex column. And then once it reaches a small screen, there's enough room for us to define this as a flex row to have them side by side. We want to pass a gap here and we're gonna say dash six to give some space in between our two elements. And then a margin top, we're gonna to give it the value of eight here to push it away from our header. All right, now inside of here, we're gonna have our input first. So we'll go down to our input here and we're gonna give it the type of text and then we're gonna give it a placeholder here. So we'll say placeholder, enter your email address like that. And then we want to pass it a few classes here. So let me show you right now what happens by default on an input. You guys are probably familiar with this if you've you know dealt with inputs. They have this really nasty outline that when you click on it, it'll look like that. So I do not prefer that. I don't think anybody that styles inputs prefers those nasty outlines here. So let me show you how we can actually target a focus state within Tailwinds here. So it's gonna look very similar to how we do with hover. So we're gonna say focus here and our colon. Now the property that we want to target here or we want to say is on focus, we don't want there to be any outline. So we'll pass the class of outline and say outline dash none. And that'll go ahead and remove that really dirty, nasty, uh, let's see, did that not save? Probably didn't save it, focus. Oh, we spelled it wrong, outline none, okay? And now if we come back down here, we should see when we get into this here, we don't have that nasty outline anymore. Okay, so a few other classes we need to go ahead and add here. So this is gonna be displayed as flex. So we want to say uh, the class of flex one here. And then, or sorry, the container is displayed as flex. So we want this to take up the, uh, the most amount of space possible. So we're gonna pass it flex one. And then what we also want to do is give it a padding on the left and right. And we're going to say dash two. We want to do a padding on the top and bottom. And we're going to say three. And then we also want to round this. So we're going to say rounded. And we're going to say MD. And then you can tell when we typed in there the first time we weren't able to see the text because by default we said text white. So we need to explicitly say text black here as the color. Okay, so if we save that head over here, you can see now we have a much better styled input, which when I type in here, you're able to see the actual text. All right, so that looks good. Now what we need to do is we need to actually get our button here. So let's go to one of our cards here. Actually, I'm gonna go back up to the one in the hero section here, which is gonna be the one we're going to want to target here. So we're going to say BTN purple and we'll grab that one. And let's put that right below this input here. Now, we don't want to use this BTN purple class because that's going to change the color to purple. For this one, we want to use the color of red here. So we didn't create a base style for that. And I don't think it's really necessary. The only reason I wanted to create those base styles was to show you how you can, you know, make things a little bit easier for yourself. So what we can do is just say BG and we're gonna say bookmark red. Now, when we hover over this, or well, what was that? If we hover over this, uh, you can see that on our initial thing, we're not doing anything. And I didn't add a hover effect to this one, but we can, okay? And we can just change it to this hover effect when you change it to white and then it'll convert to black. Now, if we look over this on our screen right now, I don't think I saved it. So if we save that, it should look a lot better. So get it on Chrome. We don't want it to say get on Chrome. We want to say contact us here contact us like that and that should look all good i'm happy with that hover effect so it's just a simple change it to white and change the text to black and we're still going to have that transition because we have the btn class on here but we're just going to go ahead and explicitly say we want the background color to be red here all right so now if you hover over this you can see that it's going to convert to white with black text and then we if we hover over or hover back off of it it's going to go back to red with the white text here so that is going to do it for our contact section here now to wrap up our landing page here the last thing we have is going to be our footer down here all right so let's go ahead and work on that so let's do a few line breaks here and we'll say footer like that 
and we're gonna use the footer tag here and we'll say like that. And a few classes we wanna pass here are going to be, so the background we're gonna be using our custom color of blue. So we're gonna say BG, book, mark, and we'll do blue. And we wanna pass it a padding on the top and bottom and we're gonna say eight, okay? Now inside of here, we're gonna have our container to wrap everything. So we'll say div and we'll give it a class container. And we're also gonna pass a few other classes along with this. So we want to display this container as flex. And we're gonna do a mobile first approach as we have throughout this whole landing page. So we want to start off by saying flex column. And once we get to a medium breakpoint, we're gonna convert it to a flex row here. And then we also want to have all the items aligned to the center. So we're gonna say item center. Okay, and that's gonna do it for our actual classes there on the div. Now we're gonna have two flex items here. We're gonna have the left-hand side and we're gonna have the right. So as you can see, we're gonna have our logo and our navigation items here on the left and then we're gonna have our icons on the right. So let's start off with the left-hand side. So we're gonna create a div here and we're gonna give it our, to find some classes. So we're gonna say flex. So we'll do, uh, we'll give the class a flex there. We want this to take up the entire space possible and leave room only for the items on the right hand side. So it's going to take up all the room possible minus the room required for the actual icons. All right. And we want to add a property of flex wrap here. So in the event that it runs out of space, it'll wrap onto the next line here. Then we want to align all the items to the center. So we'll say item center. We also want to justify them to the center. So we'll say justify center here. Now we don't want them to justify to the center on larger viewports. So as you can see here, once we get to the medium breakpoint, we're gonna convert this to a flex row. So what we wanna do here is when we get to medium, we want to say justify, let's see, justify, and we'll say start to justify them back on the left-hand side. And then lastly here, I want to pass the gap class and we're gonna say 12. Now inside of here, let's go ahead and get our image. So we'll say dot images here, and we're gonna use the image of logo bookmark white. And then we're gonna have our UL. Now what we can do here is I believe the UL for our footer is gonna be exactly the same as it is in our header. So let's open up this tag right here. And you know what, we'll just grab the actual LI items here. We don't want to copy the UL as there are some different class structures on there that we're not gonna be using. So we'll say UL here. And then some classes we want to add to this are gonna be flex. We're gonna say text white, and we're gonna say uppercase here, and gap 12, and also text is gonna be extra small. Okay, and then we have our li, LI items here. I can, for some reason, not say that. Okay, and that's gonna do it for the actual navigation part portion of our footer. Now, next up here, we want to grab our, we want to set up our icons here. So we're gonna have another div. This is gonna have the class of flex to display our items here in this flex in a row. We want to provide it a class of gap 10 to separate the items. And then we're gonna say margin top 12 because when this collapses into a mobile view, we want to align or we want to provide some separation in between these two items here. Okay, so we're gonna say MT12. And then once we get to a medium screen here, we're gonna say MT and we'll pass that the value of zero. Now we're also gonna have some LI items in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that twice. And we want to go to Font Awesome to get the Facebook and Twitter icons here. So let's go to Font Awesome and we'll type in, let's see, Twitter. And we want this one right here. So we'll grab that, come back over here and we'll paste that inside of here. And then the next one we want is gonna be for Facebook. So we'll type in Facebook here. And then we're gonna want, so let's see, we'll click search. And we're gonna want this one, I believe, right here is what we're using. Let me see, uh, we're using the square one actually. So we'll grab, well, wrong tab three times. We'll grab this one right here and we'll paste this one in like that, okay? Now, we also wanna pass along some classes. By default, these icons will be the color black. So we're gonna say text white here. And then we want to give it text and we're gonna say 2XL. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing here. We'll say text white and then text to XL. 
And that should go ahead and do it for our footer here. So if we come back over to our landing page here, you should see now that we have this view right here for our footer. So let's go ahead and inspect it. As I didn't show you the inspected version of, or the collapsed version of our contact section here. So we'll show you both of those here. As we get down, things are going to start to collapse here. And I believe at a medium break point, we have both of these collapsing. So you can see here that it collapsed. And what's going to happen is this is going to run out of room. But since we applied flex wrap, it's going to wrap to the next line. And there you go. That one had in collapse right there. And you can see it's going to then collapse. And then these are going to be on the bottom. And that's going to be in a column view here. All right. So that is going to do it for our footer section. And that actually is going to wrap it up for our entire landing page here. So hopefully after watching this video, you have the confidence to start using Tailwinds inside of your own projects. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we only covered the surface of what Tailwinds has to offer as we could not cover everything inside of this video. Now, if you want to continue learning more about Tailwinds, I highly encourage you to go over to the documentation as it is very clear and concise and gives you step-by-step -step instructions to whatever you're trying to go ahead and implement with this framework. All right. So anyways, hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you guys did, I would really appreciate you guys leaving a like down below and subscribing if you guys are new. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.